how did humanity survive through its early years? Homo sapiens were the skinny, big-brained creatures of their time, essentially the nerds of the animal kingdom. Now, while they were excellent engineers and innovators, their fighting skills were, as you can see, lacking. They were much more interested in painting pretty pictures than in, I don't know, defending themselves. So, with this in mind, one must wonder, why didn't mankind go the way of the dodo? So, we were five feet nine inches, and um, we were carrying sharpened rocks. Now, I propose that mankind's single greatest attribute, which allowed us to survive, was the torso's resemblance to the human face. <clears throat> a feature which I've named... <clears throat> a feature which I've named the Magna Facies. <laughs> Mimicry is a common strategy in nature and is seen in all manner of species. As with these creatures, <laughs> our bodies... As with these creatures, our body's uncanny resemblance to the face is no mere accident of evolution. Individuals whose bodies most resembled faces were able to survive longer and procreate more, <laughs> thus passing this advantage onto their offspring. <laughs> now, before we get started, let's note the differences between humans and animals, and let's start by discussing the nipple and the areola. Other animals' nipples will darken when producing milk, but humans are the only creatures that constantly exhibit discoloration in the nipple. <clears throat> now, <laughs> I think there's a relatively simple explanation for this. The nipples were mistaken for eyes by predators. <laughs> Next, let's discuss the navel. While all mammals, aside from marsupials and monotremes, have navels, these are usually covered by fur or scar tissue. Mankind's uniquely conspicuous navels seem to have no purpose and can only be explained as an evolutionary adaptation to make the belly button <laughs> resemble a mouth. <laughs> of course, some may wonder how the genetic aberration known as the Audi exists, but I believe it is simply the result of less selection pressure on the average person in the modern era which allows them to survive and pass on these, well, negative genes. <laughs> so, as a bit of evidence for this theory, let's first discuss human reactions to stress and cold. In stressful situations, such as, say, lion attacks, the body undergoes vasoconstriction, or the tightening of blood vessels. This reaction gives an overwhelming sensation of warmth to the individual that's occurring within. Now, this reaction would likely be used in order to fend off predators. Next, let's talk about paradoxical undressing. <laughs> paradoxical undressing occurs in the final stages of hypothermia. And it, um, well, basically, when you get really cold, you want to take your clothes off. So I think that the reason for this is so that you could scare off predators and scavengers when you were unable to defend yourself. Now, evidence for this is even provided by <laughs> legendary heroes and villains. <laughs> now, <clears throat> yeah, they would use their torso to um, threaten enemies and assert dominance. This intimidation power happens to be the only possible explanation for, for the bat nipples. <laughs> There is one flaw in my general theory that may lead some to doubt its veracity. Shirts. <laughs> Shirts are worn throughout the world, even in areas where they are not a necessity. In fact, in some cultures, it is taboo or even illegal for individuals to remove their upper body clothing in public. This is especially true for women. Now, men, to tend, men tend to take off their shirts when um, temperatures rise, right? And as you can see in this scatter plot, there is a direct correlation between temperatures and homicide rates, <laughs> proving that shirtlessness is directly associ associated with violence. 
Regarding female shirtlessness, while I personally am very sympathetic to such movements as free the nipple, <clears throat> there is one issue. As you can see, there, there's a militant aspect to this, right? If we were to um, free the nipple, as they say, I think that this will lead to only an anarchic state, and honestly, do, do any of us want that? Personally, I think that men should just cover up too. Thank you. <laughs>